too. Very good. Good morning. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Glad to see you all again. We are here in our office today, and we want to talk to you about the subject of consistency. Now, before you click off, mm -hmm. I want you to listen to this. Dreaming and making your heart come alive are possible when you learn the art of being consistent. And the Bible talks about it as persevering and abiding, and Barry's going to talk about that in just a minute. But um, I was talking with a young lady who was telling me about her dad that had carpal tunnel, um, not syndrome, but just symptoms in his arm, and he had pain in his arm. And he started taking this, this health product, and he took it one time a day, and it didn't work and he took it two times a day and it didn't work finally he realized he needed to take it three times because when he took it three times and when he was consistent all of the symptoms completely left and so there are so many things in our lives that will benefit from us mm -hmm. being consistent another these and these are just kind of simple examples but um, my daughter Allah and our son are very um, religious and and committed and consistent with exercise in their lives and they were exercising and just doing so well and and they weren't losing any weight and they realized that there needed to be something else that they did and so they kept being diligent and consistent in doing it and pursuing what they needed to learn so that they could lose weight. And so they realized that number one, they needed to cut out sugar. And so they did, and they were consistent in that. They also realized that they needed to cut down their portions of what they were eating. And so they did, and they were consistent in it. They also realized that in addition to the exercise they were doing, they needed to do some heavier weight lifting for their total body and that just shifted. But you see the perseverance and the commitment to going after something and, and you should see them. My daughter-in-law has buns of steel. Mm. <laughs> um, they're just, and you know, they're healthy and they're happy and, but, but I just, I love the fact that there are things in our lives that are good that God wants for us. And the only thing that keeps us from really getting those things and getting the effects of the goodness of those things is our inability to be consistent. And we live in an era, we live in a time where everything is just so by the seat of our pants and, and what we feel and um, you know what makes our heart come alive. And, and, and there's, there's a lost art of stamina and perseverance and consistency and and really focusing and going after things that may not be that fun to do initially yeah yeah, yeah some of those words uh, endurance perseverance patience diligence abiding remaining continuing faithfulness they're 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 good words but they're not the most fun words to think about and a lot of times people say don't ask God for patience but I really would not recommend that you don't ask God for patience because it's, it's, it's a really good thing. I think all of these words are, describe different aspects of the word faithfulness. Mm -hmm. And they're all used a lot in the Bible. All these words in endurance, perseverance, patience, faithfulness, they describe the character of God and, and, and they really ought to be a big part of our character mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. they're, they're very important to God. Yeah. Uh, the word, and like I said, a lot of people will say, oh, don't ask God for patience. And yet, in 1 Corinthians 13, the very first d word that describes love is love is patient. Love is patient and kind. And actually, like the King James Version says, love suffers long and is kind. And that's really what that word means. The patience is going through suffering, going through hard things. And, and, and then it says you still remain kind and you go through those things without getting angry. And you tolerate the suffering and stuff and and it's a good thing we don't like it but it's a good thing <clears throat> mm -hmm. in Hebrews 6 12 the Bible tells us that patience says faith and patience is necessary to inherit the promises of God so mm -hmm. I mean, that's a good thing we really want what God has said over our lives what we hope for him to do and he's saying one of the things I need from you is I need you to be 
uh, faithful and patient. And that word patient there means it describes somebody who doesn't get mad and quit or doesn't get mad and retaliate, but keeps going. Remains consistent. Yeah. And persevering. And doesn't quit. Keeps going even when things get hard or when we're not treated well. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the really uh, famous scriptures, which is often quoted, is John 8.32, which says, The truth will set you free. The interesting thing is that's the second half of a condition. Or Jesus says, if you abide in my words, mm. then you'll truly be my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And so there's a condition, a prerequisite mm -hmm. to abiding, continuing, remaining in his mm -hmm. words. That's how we actually know the truth that will set us free. And, you know, just even practically speaking, in our own lives, how many of us uh, like to have people around us who are not consistent un or undependable? You know... Uh, we don't. And then we don't. A spouse <laughs> versus people who are consistent, dependable, reliable. They're faithful to what they say. Their words, they do what they say. They mean what they say. You know, a spouse, a child, uh, an employer who's over us, uh, a pastor, uh, or employees if we have employees, even government leaders, just anybody around us that's important to us. We appreciate people. Uh, being men of and women of their word and being consistent, doing what they say they mm -hmm. say they will do. Mm -hmm. Can I give another it just example? makes life so much easier, and it brings peace, and it also um, it also helps uh, cr uh, maintain cr uh, connection. Because mm -hmm. when, when people aren't aren't saying what they mean and doing what they say, then uh, it's hard to stay a real close connection with that. So I wanted yeah. to finish that. Yeah, yeah. Um, another example of really being consistent is. I remember back in 94, I was reading a book from Rick Joyner, and he was talking about how he prayed for encounters with the Lord to go to the third heaven. And yeah. he prayed that for, guess how many? How long would you pray that? If you were really going after God and you really wanted something, how, how many years would you do that? Would you do it months? Would you do it three or four years? Wow, still didn't happen. I've heard people say that before. You know, I've been praying and praying for this, and, and somebody asked him, well, how long have you been praying? Oh, four years. He prayed 25 years mm -hmm. to be able to come into God's presence and have an encounter with Him in heaven. And, and then as a result of that, as a result of the prayers and the desire and the commitment to going after this desire, God gave that to him. Yeah. And God doesn't always tell us when he's going to answer our prayers. Yeah. And there's reasons for that because sometimes even in the longevity, it's building the spiritual muscles that we'll need for when we get the thing we're actually asking for. Yeah, that's yeah, true. Made me think of a passage in James where it says, draw near to God and he will draw mm. near to you. And the, for the us says it's a command. It's in the imperative uh, Greek ten, tense. And it says, uh, or the imperative mood it says it's a command to us to draw near to God and, and so we have to keep doing that draw near to God and it's in the present imperative which you start and keep doing it and it mm -hmm. says in the future sometime God will draw near to you it may be quick it may not be but yeah. but the idea is you just keep doing your part and God will do his in the in the right timing and I think of Abraham and I mean, you can go on and on almost every man of God every man and woman of God that he called there was a time of waiting there's a time uh, of, where things even looked like they weren't going to be what God said until they came to pass. And you all know that. You're familiar with the Bible. Yeah. You know that that is just the way it is. Mm -hmm. God uses consistency and perseverance. Um, you know, even if we're really gifted by God, even if we're really talented, uh, there's just something about practicing something over mm -hmm. and over and over we, where that skill develops. And the anointing of God develops on us as yeah. we continue to practice and value what he's given to us and 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 use it regularly yeah. we all know somebody who's done something one time really great and they don't continue in it and it's like it just doesn't it isn't that impressive yeah, yeah. you know or we hear of one hit wonders of musicians that did one song and then there's others that just continue with great song after great song for years and there's a whole big difference in what they were able to bring and contribute because of the consistency. Then, and there's really important things even as parents. <laughs> That's probably one of the, the greatest gifts to a child if a parent can be consistent. Yeah. Consistent in their love, consistent in their training, consistent in their discipline, 
consistent in their encouragement, consistent in just even setting aside time to enjoy and be with their children, that that creates children that grow up confident and become leaders because their their environment has been consistent. There's been no surprises and they could count on things and, and they were able to learn better in that way. Yeah. Even just even our consistency in pursuing mm -hmm. one another, you know, how we love one another, pursuing one another emotionally and yeah. just relationally and doing things together, being patient with one another, pursuing one another sexually. You know, when you get so busy and sometimes it's like, nah, I don't want to do it, I'm too tired. But but you know what? We've learned, and if you come to our workshops, we talk about this a lot, but it's our sexual connection is a very important thing to God. And it's very, very spiritual. And it's 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 even an important thing. It's like an offensive weapon. So if that is true, then why shouldn't we be consistent? Yeah. Just, I'm too tired, or I don't want to, or, I, or I, I'm not thinking, you know, for, for women, lots of times we just think emotionally and mentally, oh, I'm not there, you know? Well, I just don't want to because I'm not thinking about it. Well, I know that I can change the way I feel about him when I decide to set my mind on coming together sexually right. and emotionally. Yeah, and you know, this thing of consistency is not just a thing of discipline. Mm -hmm. It's a thing of being consistent remaining and enduring and being faithful <clears throat> to the things that are good and for the things that are good for us so that we get something good. Just discipline for discipline's sake yeah. is, is, will teach us discipline. But when we are faithful to the things of God and faithful to His promises, then we get to reap the benefits. I think of, yes. again, the Bible tells us in Romans, um, I think it's 4, where it talks about Abraham, the father of our faith, who again, what, he was given a promise and waited 25 years for the fulfillment of that promise. But it says, in hope against hope he mm. waited, and he did not waver in unbelief, in, in order that he would receive the promise. He wanted what God told him, that he would be the father of many yeah. nations. And, and he wanted that. It wasn't just, oh, Abraham, I want you to be disciplined. I want you to to um, just wait and endure. And maybe you'll get something good. He says, no, there's something good for you, and, uh, and but he had to wait and yeah. be faithful for it. So God, he, he wants this mm -hmm. for us so that we can really receive the good things that he has for us and not miss them. Yeah, it made me think of a story of a single friend of ours that got divorced in her early 20s. The Lord gave her a dream and showed her he had a man for mm -hmm. her. Wow. And she'd gotten prophetic words and I think we were even a part of her life giving encouraging prophetic wow. words about marriage and stuff. Do you know she had to wait? She was, I think, in her early 20s. She had to wait till she was 55. Yeah. And, and you know, I've told that story to some singles, and they go, oh, man, I hope that never happens yeah. to me. But you know what? And most people don't have to wait that long. No. But she waited but, faithfully. And what she waited faithfully, she, she was consistent in her relationship with God, in her relationship with the body of Christ, mm -hmm. And, and, and her um, ability to be able to give and be with people. And she has lived a full life. She's not been sitting pining around, even though she has been asking the Lord diligently, Lord, bring my husband. And the Lord continued to give her dreams. And, you know, the end of that story is just amazing. She, she ends up supernaturally meeting this man yeah. and, and I don't even have the time to tell you the whole thing it's pretty amazing but they are perfect for one another wow. and it's like time meant nothing she, he was 64 she was 55 but it's it's like they're in their 30s you know they're 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 doing all kinds of things they're going all over the world they're ministering together yeah. they're very active physically they yeah. and, and and she said she even was able to give up and say I okay Lord I'm past the child rearing years, child bearing years, so now I want grandchildren. And do you know, she came in to a home that had lost their grandma three years prior mm -hmm. to this, and she has grandchildren yeah. that are already wanting her and adoring her. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, God has been calling us to more consistency in the area of just crying out to him for specific things mm -hmm. and calling out and, and, and not stopping. And we're really seeing fruit from that. And so we wanted to right now challenge you. You mm -hmm. want to go ahead and do that? Do sure. That? Yeah. We want to um, challenge you to spend some time with the Lord 
if you're single, you can do it by yourself or you can even invite a friend to do this with you. Or if you're married, do it with your spouse. And just put on some, some instrumental music and just just listen to him for a little bit. Just let him let his presence come and be with you in this time. And then begin to write down the areas that he highlights and the things that are really the desires of your heart that you want to be consistent in because mm -hmm. these things are important to you. Yeah. And we mentioned a bunch of different things just now, but we want you to ask the Lord because I, I don't want you to do a whole bunch of stuff, make this huge list right. that you do, do everything so that you get discouraged and, and you don't, you know, you don't, aren't able to follow through. But if you can just ask the Lord, would you highlight a few things right. in my life that you, and, and you know that, that that's in my heart that I need and I want to be consistent in. And then write those down and then just, just commit that to the Lord and ask Him to help you be consistent. If, if you've gone through our workshops, you know how to bless your spirits to, to, to be able to be consistent and, mm -hmm. and, and just spend some time praying about that. And then also ask the Lord, to give you a strategy on how to be um, persevering in this, right. how to carry this out. Yeah. And I just want to reinforce what Lori said. Pick one or two things. Try to be successful in those as you develop this habit lifestyle of, of, of discipline and enduring, persevering, and continuing being faithful. It'll spread over into other areas of your life. So we just want to bless you to receive this as a good word from God for you, for your lives, for, for our lives. Um, all of us to see and experience the benefits of consistency. Yeah. It's not the most popular thing in our culture right now, mm -hmm. um, but I bless you to take it into your life anyway and let it become a mainstay. And I pray you'll receive the benefits that will go into your life, into your children, mm -hmm. and your children's children. Mm -hmm. In and, Jesus' name. And Lord, I ask that you would light a hunger under them. Mm -hmm in the areas that they've really been even crying out to you for help in, that this would be um, a divine convergence right now of, of will and emotions and spirit and um, perseverance mm -hmm. and consistency. Lord, we ask that you would help them get the things that you've put in their hearts that you want to you wanna bring forth. Amen. 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 All right, <laughs> till next time, God bless you. Bye-bye.